Travel consider happening now. And already this afternoon, numerous thunderstorms developing in West Texas. We're closely monitoring the situation as they should come together and head towards San Antonio later tonight. I'm Adam Kasky. I'll have the latest on timing and severe weather threats coming right up. No, 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 no. In this video that has since gone viral, a brawl breaks out at a local store and witnesses say it was all because a man was asked to wear a mask. I'm Devin Clark and coming up, a local psychologist breaks down possible reasons for this behavior. They visit patients at their homes. They help run walk up clinics. Now the MIH team is growing. We talk to the man in charge. Now that you have plenty of time for reading, how about going digital? Coming up, we'll look at your options and the best e-reader. A well-known jazz musician from San Antonio recovering from COVID-19. How playing the trombone may have saved his life. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, sunny and quiet in San Antonio right now, but we are watching storms developing out west that will likely affect us later tonight. Adam Caskey joins us now with the very latest. Adam? Yeah, Easties and Steve, we have some activity far west of San Antonio. It's uh, just outside of our viewing area, so we'll show you the radar in one moment. I do want to point out the severe thunderstorm watch that's in effect for locations west of town, including the hill country. That means conditions are favorable for severe thunderstorms. Now, just because San Antonio is not included in this does not mean that we're out of the woods. We have a risk of severe thunderstorms here as well, just not as immediate in terms of timing. So some activity in Mexico and just moving into western Valverde County. We're watching that, but uh, more development in West Texas is likely to come together and make it to the I-35 corridor sometime between about 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. That's what we're thinking for the timing. We'll talk more about this along with the primary threats for severe weather coming up. Thank you, Adam. New at five video of an argument between an angry shopper and other customers inside a north side 99 cent store going viral online. The heated confrontation happened on Wednesday at the 99 cents only store on Old Thousand Oaks near Jones Maltzberger Road. According to San Antonio Police, the man at the center of the video became irritated after a manager told him he needed to wear a mask inside the store. This confrontation opening opening up a larger conversation about the mask debate. Devin Clark spoke to a local psychologist who says how someone reacts to being asked to wear a mask could all boil down to how they manage stress. In this video that has now gone viral, San Antonio police say this unidentified man seen in the blue shirt yelling is upset about being asked to wear a mask inside of the store. Investigators say when the man noticed he was being recorded, he became violent and hit the victim's cell phone out of his hand before grabbing his neck and pushing him up against a freezer. Nobody can predict what someone is going to do. Dr. Ebony Jackson is a local psychologist and says the COVID-19 pandemic has had unprecedented effects on the human psyche. We're not, nobody was prepared for this. We weren't equipped to deal with this psychologically and people who are doing, who are doing well prior to this are struggling. Though she has not met or evaluated the man in the video, she says erratic behavior like his could be fueled by stress mismanagement. When people are under stress, we go into this fight, flight, or freeze type of reaction. She says in some cases, stress could be coupled with a sense of entitlement and adds that not everyone has the ability to think about how their actions affect other people. When I say entitlement, it's like, you can't, don't tread on me. These are my rights. I have the right to kind of do whatever I want. This is America. But that's not true. You can't go to the store with, without shoes. You can't go to the store without a shirt on. As far as the man in the video, he has not been arrested, but police say it's possible he could face assault charges. No matter how you feel about an issue, Dr. Jackson says it's never an excuse to lash out or harm others. Instead, you can exercise, which helps release calming endorphins, or focus on doing something that you love. Also, she says it's not a good idea to ingest too much negative information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. We have more information on KSAT.com. Reporting in the newsroom, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Three stories to know today. San Antonio police are asking for help finding 54-year-old Joanna Chow. She was last seen on Saturday on the northwest side. Police say she was driving a blue Mercury sedan with this license plate number. It's Texas license plate GGZ8136. 
Here's another look at her picture. If you have any information, contact SAPD at the number on your screen, 210-207-7660. A Bear County grand jury has indicted a 19-year-old man on capital murder charges in the deaths of his mother and sister. On March 12th, police say Jose Hernandez Jr. fatally stabbed Raquel Hernandez Mojica and Andrea Hernandez at a home in the 300 block of Gillette Boulevard. Hernandez was also indicted on a separate charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after he stabbed another woman the same day. Police say three other people were inside the home at the time of the stabbings. It is unclear what the motive was. A man who was hit and killed by a vehicle last night has been identified as 40 year old Gregory Jackson. San Antonio police say around 10 last night he was walking in an unlit area on Highway 181 South not far from Old Corpus Christi Road. A driver didn't see him, struck him with his vehicle. Jackson died at the scene. The driver did stop to help and will not likely face any charges. They're on the front lines of the city's COVID-19 response and their role is only set to grow. The San Antonio Fire Department's mobile integrated health care team has performed thousands of swabs since February. Garrett Berger talks to the team's program manager about their growing role in the pandemic response and their next steps to fill it. Dozens lined up at the Southside Lions Park this morning to get tested. In the thick of it, as they have been since the beginning of the city's pandemic response, is the mobile integrated healthcare team. We just kind of fell right in, into place with, with that mission, knocking on doors, getting the, you know, the test kits. The MIH program started in 2014 to help get ahead of 911 calls by visiting high frequency patients to see if there's something they need before they call again. But when people began coming back from COVID-19 hot zones, the MIH team tackled that. We would send a team of two and then we'd go and get samples from them. Since then, they've also helped do more in-home testing and even follow up with COVID-19 patients coming to them if something is wrong. So we're trying to limit the their exposure into the hospital system if it's not necessary. Not to mention the testing they've done at nursing homes, the jail, Haven for Hope, and these walk-up clinics, plus helping other Texas cities. As the pandemic has grown and the responsibilities with it, their team needs to as well. MIH has 10 full-time paramedics. The fire department plans to get at least 100 more firefighters and paramedics trained to help them with the testing, especially since the governor now wants all nursing homes tested. We're going to do an additional, we're going to have an additional five MIH teams of, of eight for, to, to respond to this. And they will also be available for state and local missions. It's the price of success but it's a price they'll pay. That's what happens, right? You do good, you get more work, and that's okay, because that's what we're here for. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The Baptist Health System announcing a big change starting next week. Beginning on Monday, hospital patients will be allowed one accompanying visitor. Hospitals stopped allowing visitors back in March. Since then, Baptist Health has developed new guidelines, including screening visitors upon entry and requiring them to wear ID tags and face masks. Anyone who doesn't comply will not be allowed inside. Baptist Health System says the new safety standards are in place to maintain a safe environment for patients and visitors. President Donald Trump says vaccine or no vaccine, the U.S. will be back to the way things were before the coronavirus. As Camila Bernal reports, the Trump administration promises to work at, quote, warp speed to develop a vaccine by the end of the year. To make Americans and the rest of the world feel safer amid the coronavirus pandemic. We're looking for a full vaccine for everyone that wants to get it. The president introducing members of Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. The goal, develop a proven COVID-19 vaccine safely and quickly. When I say quickly, we're looking to get it by the end of the year if we can. Maybe before the president and his team feel encouraged that out of about 100 vaccine candidates, experts identified 14 promising ones. These data made me feel even more confident that we will be able to deliver a few hundred million doses of vaccine by the end of 2020. And from a potentially historic vaccine timeline to a historic vote. Lawmakers consider changing House rules to allow remote voting, something that's never been done in the 231 year history of the House of Representatives. Also on the docket, a sweeping coronavirus aid package. The legislation, which includes another stimulus payment and funding for increased COVID testing, has a price tag of more than $3 trillion. If passed, it would be the largest relief package in U.S. history. 
but it has an uphill battle to become law. The legislation is not expected to be taken up by the Senate, and the White House threatened to veto the bill. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. And before we go to our next story, we want to correct the license plate number on the missing woman's vehicle that we told you about a little bit earlier in this newscast. That license plate on Joanna Chow's blue Mercury sedan. This is the correct license plate number. It is GGZ 8163. We apologize for giving the incorrect one a little bit earlier in the show. Meantime, here's another look at the picture. Again, if you have any information, contact SAPD at 210-207-7660. Food, toiletries, masks, and a mobile shower. It's what was offered to people experiencing homelessness at a homeless care drive-in in, in District 2 today. Councilwoman Jada Andrews Sullivan and her team helped to organize the event. With the help of several organizations, they helped distribute essential things to those in need at a very crucial time. Because you have so many places that are, that, that are closed, we are finding out maybe our homeless shelters are filled to capacity. So those that are, are still you know, out uh, are probably having a difficult time uh, uh, finding resources. Spurs Give, Meals on Wheels, Veterans Helping Veterans, and Catholic Charities are just a few of the organizations who helped with today's event. Jazz musician Ron Wilkins is known for his talent on the trombone. To avoid the pandemic in New York City, where he lives, Wilkins returned to his hometown of San Antonio. As Jesse DeGriato explains, a close friend believes this is where COVID-19 finally caught up with him. I hope you all are well. I hope you all are healthy. The well-known jazz trombonist from San Antonio based in New York City, Ron Wilkins also talked about a friend of his. He's on the tail end of his dealing with the coronavirus, but it's nasty. It's really nasty and it's deadly. So you want to really be careful. Yet less than two weeks after posting that and taking his own precautions, Wilkins was hospitalized here in San Antonio. Now he's in a rehab facility after 33 days on a ventilator. He's doing amazingly well. He's just been so determined and resilient. Shown here with his donor, Wilkins had a kidney transplant seven years ago, but also given his most recent ordeal. I was just terrified and he managed to do it again just just bounce back and, and come back with his great spirit. Yet she says it's too soon to say whether he'll resume playing his treasured trombone. But the fact that he had such strong developed lungs and is just a master at breathing techniques, I think really saved his life. A jazz trombonist herself. I've just been dreaming about being able to to play together again, and I'm, I'm very hopeful that that will happen. Before Wilkins fell ill, he urged people to get tested and seek medical help. Because this coronavirus is really bad. Jesse DeGollado. Y'all take care. Love ya. KSAT 12 News. You want to help out? Well, tonight, musicians from the Count Basie and Vancouver Orchestras, among others, are holding a live jazz benefit concert to help with Wilkins' medical bills. It's at 7 o'clock tonight, and on Ron's Facebook is where you can find it again. It's on Ron's Road to Recovery com as well. If you've already done all the cleaning and binge watching you can possibly do, how about some reading? You can have access to thousands of books and audiobooks just by using library apps. Up next, how to go digital and which e-reader gets top ratings. Now that you've probably cleaned out all the closets and watched all of Netflix, how about curling up with a good book? You have thousands at your fingertips with digital downloads. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on e-readers and apps you may want to check out. Chelsea Hudson's book. COVID-19 is writing a new chapter. Even book clubs are online. If you can't get to a bookstore or library, you can read an e-book, so you may want a tablet or e-reader. The Amazon Kindle e-readers are the best rated in our ratings. Incredible battery life, 
The screen is very legible. If you want more flexibility, a tablet is a more well-rounded device. The flip side there is that tablets can be more expensive. You can visit the Bear County Bibliotheque or City Libraries from the comfort of your home using their digital services. Here I've loaded the San Antonio Public Library app. I can go through all kinds of titles, pick one, and all I need is my library card. Libraries are encouraging readers to go digital with apps like Overdrive and Libby. You choose what you like and a digital download is sent to your device for a set number of days. Don't have a tablet or e-reader? What folks may not know is that you don't necessarily need to buy either an e-reader or a tablet to start reading e-books. The apps work on a laptop or phone, but that may be harder on your eyes. If you prefer to listen, try Hoopla, where your library card gets you access to audiobooks, music, and movies. If you subscribe to Amazon Prime, you can get free eBooks using Prime Reading and the Kindle app. Check out the Library of Congress online and Project Gutenberg, a free website that makes digital copies of old books, no longer copyrighted, available. So much to read and time to do it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a live look with Sky 12 over downtown, like we said at the top of the show. It's nice, mm -hmm. it's sunny, mm -hmm. but we're expecting that to change. Adam. Yeah, you know, it's very muggy outside today. I'm sure a lot of you noticed that very sticky out there. We have a lot of instability in our atmosphere, and that mugginess, I think, is just going to fuel some thunderstorms later on tonight. Now, the primary threats for severe thunderstorms straight or, or straight line winds and flash flooding. Also the chance there of some large hail around an inch in diameter. That's going to be, I think, a little more localized than the wind threat just due to the stratification of the storms that we're expecting. OK, let's take a look at the areas that are more likely to see severe weather. That's that orange swath across Texas, basically from Wichita Falls southward towards San Antonio and westward on into Eagle Pass and Del Rio. That's the enhanced risk area as denoted by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. That's basically a three out of five on the severe weather risk scale, if you will. Yellow areas, they're under the slight risk. It's just not as enhanced, but you still do have that risk for severe thunderstorms. OK, so the activity right now, we've got some general storms east of town near Houston. That's a separate system. What we're watching is this activity in Mexico and West Texas right now in Mexico, west of Del Rio. It's lit up. This is likely to hold together, organize maybe a bit more as it heads eastward. Head into Terrell County, moving into Crockett County, clipping northwestern Valverde County. Nothing severe but a lot of lightning, thunder, and some heavy rainfall. There are some severe thunderstorm watches and warnings out there, but even if we're not within this watch box, it doesn't mean we don't have a primed atmosphere for severe weather. This is just the area that's basically seen it right now. That's one way to look at this, and that's where we have the warnings that are in effect in West Texas. Now, this is all part of this ripple in the upper level flow that's strengthening and basically kicking off these storms right on time uh, this afternoon and into the evening. And a lot of this is even a boundary to the north likely to come together as it moves towards San Antonio and making it here later tonight. Now there are half a dozen high resolution computer models we look at. This one I think has the best handle on the timing of this complex of storms as it heads eastward. Notice by 10 p.m. it's just west of I-35. Then we get to 11 p.m. midnight rolls through San Antonio, so I'd call it basically a soft midnight is when you can expect it in and around Bear County. And then after midnight, it all moves eastward. By sunrise tomorrow, we'll actually see a decent amount of sunshine and the weekend's looking all right. Now, additional rainfall, I think, is going to be limited in spots just because of the fast moving nature of this, but still one to two inches across a good portion of South Texas is looking likely with some localized pockets of even higher amounts where we see the heavier rain that kind of follows each other and you get a few extra showers or it or you, the heaviest rain sets up. So as for tomorrow, nothing to worry about. Once we get into the morning sunrise, storm chances move off the coastline. Mixture of sun and clouds, 83, just a gentle breeze. Sunday, an isolated pop-up storm possible at 87 and partly cloudy. And we could really use all the rain we could get from this system because you look ahead, even as we get into next week, chances are looking pretty minimal as a big blue H settles in. So we'll keep you updated on air and online tonight.
Please do. Thanks so much, Adam. All right, a lot of concerns tonight for one of Houston's most successful managers. Yeah, it's Art Howe, and I grew up covering the Astros with him as a manager, remembering very well. He's now hospitalized, suffering from the coronavirus. When we come back, we'll let you know how he is doing, and NASCAR is ready for their restart when we come back. Former Astros manager Art Howe's intensive character contracting the coronavirus. That is what he told our sister station in Houston, KPRC. After first feeling the symptoms back on May the 3rd, learned two days later he tested positive for COVID-19. But after trying to recover at home, his symptoms got worse. He had to be rushed to the hospital by ambulance where he's now in ICU. Howe told the TV station he first started feeling chills and then total fatigue before losing his sense of taste. Howe, who's now 73 years old, played in the majors for 12 seasons and included a stint with the Houston Astros from 1976 to 82. He would later manage Managed the Astros for five seasons, starting in 1989, and later took over the Oakland A's in 1996, where he led the A's to the playoffs three times. Is also there where Billy Bean took over as general manager and used Saber Metrics to evaluate players. That was turned into a best-selling book and later a movie called Moneyball. Philip Seymour Hoffman played How in the movie. Brad Keselowski has won the pole for NASCAR's restart Sunday at Darlington. He never got behind the wheel. In fact, he watched his NASCAR's chief scorer, Kyle McKinney, pick the number one ball out of a random lottery draw, given the 2012 Series champion the top starting position when the Cup Series resumes this Sunday night. He will be joined on that front row by Alex Bowman of Hendrick Motorsports. NASCAR deciding not to go with qualifying on the same day they had decided to race without practice run or fans when NASCAR drops the green flag for the first time since March when all sports were shut down by the coronavirus. Since that time, drivers have just been in simulators participating in virtual races called iRacing. Not only is this the first race for NASCAR since March, it's the first time Ryan Newman has gotten behind the wheel since his near-death experience back in February when he survived this horrific crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500. I had no apprehensions getting in the car. I was excited to get in the car. It's my favorite racetrack. And just really wanted to get back in it and at it. And um, i have been working really hard to uh, do the things that I need, needed to do uh, test-wise to you know, pass my concussion testing protocol and things like that. And I felt well and, and could prove it and drive well behind the race, behind the seat of the race car. Yeah, it gets a little scary when you consider none of these guys have been behind the wheel for weeks and now no practice runs. The green flag will drop 745 on Sunday night. San Antonio FC has returned to the practice on the pitch at Toyota Field with a number of restrictions. Only four players can participate at one time. No media is allowed. This is why this video is shot from across the street. Now we wait to see if the United Soccer League will allow the season to kick off anytime soon. You know, I'm thinking about Ryan Newman and NASCAR. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a horse, like he just wants to get back. In yeah, the I think mentally you want to get back behind right. the wheel as quick as you can. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. All right, here's the latest on storm timing. Again, a soft midnight around San Antonio, so give or take an hour or two, and that's when we're expecting it on the I-35 corridor and around Bear County. Then we go into the weekend, and it's looking fine. Just a mixture of sun and clouds, highs in the 80s, and an isolated pop-up shower or storm. But the real main event is tonight. Thank you, Adam, and thanks for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.